So what happens after that is that Rumi, through intense, deep pain and the loss that he was experiencing, he was led to awakening. He awakened. He's awakened to the truth of himself out of that encounter with his Satguru. And uh, obviously today, Rumi's poetry is being read and shared all over the world. Hundreds of years after, now Rumi is known more than ever around the world. So if you ever get a chance, uh, read some of his poetry. And now that you have a little background, you understand some of his status of the way he was feeling, then you will understand because everything is in in devotion to the to the divine being. Some of the stuff you may ask someone to do an interpretation for you, but uh, you will understand it. Anybody has any questions for me? Anything you want to share? Hi, Anita. Can you, yeah, you're unmuted, but I can't hear you. Something's, something's up with the, your mic. So maybe you mute yourself and unmute yourself. Let me see, let me do it again. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, you have to unmute yourself. Let's see if it, if it goes through. Did you do it? Uh, Zarathustra? Oh, yes. Maybe a mundane question, but why migrating and why Mexico? Oh, <laughs> uh, I was looking for a new home. And um, I was just weighing my options. Where is this new home going to be? I've been thinking about it for past few years. So it wasn't like a very sudden thing. And I uh, wanted to live somewhere more uh, smaller, someplace that there is a community and uh, I can find my brother's sisters and connect with them. Uh, some were warmer. I don't do very well. Some are, which is a little bit colder. My body's changed a lot. And I never lived in Caribbean. I always wanted to experience Caribbean. So it was like, okay. Um, I went to a few different places, check them out. And they weren't resonating with me. And then Tulum kept popping up. And uh, I came here and then I just loved it. It was like, this is my new home. I don't want to live anywhere else. That, that's how it happened. That's nice. So there's a community, like uh, some kind of uh, already established um, spiritual or... Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a big yoga community. There is a, a spiritual community. Um, and uh, there's a lot of music. You know, you've been in my retreat. You know, I like to dance. So... There's a lot of international DJs come here and they, they play music, so I love dancing. Um, everything's easy. It's easy to get around. Um, you don't have to be stuck in the traffic for two hours to, to do something. 
and uh, LA was just wearing me out. And uh, it was fine before because I spent six months a year in Europe. I was coming and touring in, to Europe, so I could tolerate it. But then after the pandemic happened and I was there for a year and a half, uh, and I realized this is not where I want to be all the time. And what about Sedona? Wasn't that like a good option or? You know, Sedona, I lived there for nine years right. and I was thinking about it, but I've eaten in every single restaurant in Sedona 50 times. Oh yeah. And I weighed the option. I realized that I'm probably gonna get bored very quickly because I've been there, done that. Right. And it's got a winter. Oh, and yeah. I wanted to be somewhere without a winter. Sounds good. So, enough. yeah. Well, enjoy. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm, uh, I'm still in the process of settling here. And uh, when everything is settled and uh, I'm comfortable, I do want to put a, a retreat uh, because this is. It's a very powerful place like Sedona. Uh, this is kind of comparable to like Egypt um, because the Mayans were here. They left their pyramids, their rooms here. And uh, it's, it's a major vortex. Uh, the water is very sexy. The beaches are white sand, very pristine beaches. The water is super clean. Um, it's quite remarkable here. I'm, I'm really like, feel very lucky that I landed here and I attribute it to the grace. It's like somehow I was gifted to be here, to come here, so. I'm just thinking here, you should give us a little tour, you know, with your uh, camera or something, you know? Uh, something. Yeah, you know, I, I actually, everyone's asking me, why don't you post pictures, more pictures, and and uh, and I'm actually planning on doing it, uh, starting in next. My mind, I, I honest, honestly, I didn't have the mental presence to take a lot of videos and pictures, and uh, my I was very occupied by trying to find a home, a vehicle, a lot of basic things, whether I'm going to live here, uh, meeting with like an immigration lawyer, meeting with a corporate lawyer. So my mind was like really trying survival, like, okay, what are the most uh, n necessary things I need to do first? So that's where my mind was. And now that I got my house, I'm like more relaxed. And uh, what you said, I was thinking about next, next couple of days, a friend wants to go to the cenotes and it was like, great. And, and uh, I can go with my friend and we can take a lot of photos and take small videos and, and start posting it. I, I like to do that, I will do it. That's fun, yeah. That's yeah, fun. I'm glad. I'm glad you brought it up. How how is Mexico about flying in nowadays? Like uh, visiting or how? Like total stop or no entries or? Oh no, it's you just fly to Cancun. They're very happy to have you. It's super easy. It's very very simple. Right. And um, in a way, it just feels like pandemic doesn't exist here because. Unless you go in a bank or you go in a supermarket, uh, nowhere else they wear masks. Right. So nobody wears masks on the street, nobody wears masks anywhere, except you go to a bank or you go to a supermarket. 